Hey, I'm Rick James. I'm Courtney Lee. And I'm Wookie. And you're watching Thrill Seeker. <laughs> This week, as a special treat for you guys, we bumped into Michael Crafter from Confession, ex-prom queen. He's recently moved up to the Gold Coast, so we had a quick chat to him about what's happening with his family life, what's happening on the new Confessions record that's about to drop, and, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Check it out. Hey, I'm Rick James, this is Thrill Seeker, and we're with Michael Crafter from Confessions and uh, ex-prom queen. How's it been, man? Uh, you're living up in the Gold Coast now, so it's, yeah. uh, it's good to get a hold of you. I, uh, I moved up here because it's warm and it's not warm now, so I'm kind of hating life. It is but, a little bit. Yeah, it's been cold the whole week and yep. raining the whole week, so yep. not really Gold Coast weather. No, no, see up here tonight, um, checking out For the Fallen Dreams and Sienna Skies and a few other bands, but um, we'll have a chat to you. you got an upcoming Confessions, that the, is it the sophomore album? Ah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. going to be the third release, so... Um, second album, which is good. So, yep. um, yeah, spent shitloads of time putting this shit together. So, yep. it's good to finally see it. Well, we're three weeks away from release. So, yep. yeah. No, it's really, really cool. I mean, obviously, anyone that doesn't know you in the Australian music scene um, probably listens to too much um, Shania Twain and, and that sort of stuff. X Factor. But, um, and, and X Factor and, and all those really, really talented. X Factor all week. It's kind of yep. exciting. Yep. A bit emotional. <laughs> so many emotional stories. It's, uh, it's good to know, good to good to <laughs> see those sort of things. It's how I waste my week. <laughs> yep. But um, I mean, what are the what are the awesome things happening in um, the notorious Michael Crafter's life right now? You got a little one on the way. Uh, my girlfriend is 13 weeks at the moment, so she's at this point. Yep. <laughs> or that point. Well, she's getting bigger and she's real small anyway, so it's kind of funny. Um, I bought a dog this week because oh, <laughs> yeah? I needed to have more stuff happening in my life. Yep. So I don't sleep because it's like having a baby. I guess it's practice. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I've been waking up at like every hour getting my ears bitten by a little arsehole. But he's really cute. And uh, yeah, just waiting for this album. Like cool. just kind of relaxing until we start touring again. And yeah, I've got busy rest of the year and busy next year so, yep. yeah. so how's the um, how's the lead up to the album being I mean where did you guys record this one um, we did, just decided to go to Sweden because yep. Swedish metal legends as yeah. far as like especially it's stuff that Frederick the dude who we did it with has worked with like, I yeah. worked with him with Prom Queen before yep. um, he's just done Saw like Saw works albums over the years In Flames did the last Bring of the Horizon. Yep. So and we got a deal, like out of control deal, that was better than cheaper than anything in Australia. Yep. Cheaper than what the stuff we got from America and stuff. So the offer that he gave us was more like mate like the craziest mates rates ever. Yeah. So it was kind of too it was too good to give up like that opportunity and we actually like I listened to the C D and it's one of the best CDs I've ever had a chance to work on. It's one of the best CDs, I reckon, as far as... Not like even the songs, just the production is yep. better than, I guess, majority of stuff that it is in Australia. And it blows anything that can be done in Australia out of the yep. water. And it's just because he's had God knows how. Like, he's been... He's 40-something, and the guy's been playing metal for, like, majority of his life, so yeah. he knows the genre, so, which is good. I mean, it's awesome to see. I mean, there's so many Australian bands now making the change and, and flying over to Sweden or America to record with, um, you know, Joey Sturgis, or they're going over and going with, the um, you know, those big-name producers, but Fredrik Nordstrom, big name, and so, I mean, obviously, you guys are going to get a sweet sound out of it, and, you know, you wouldn't expect anything less from what you guys have been doing over the last few years. Well, that's the thing. Is like the, we got like so much feedback already. Like every media outlet that's like done an interview in the last couple of weeks have heard the album. Yeah. And we haven't had one interview for the album where someone said anything bad. Everyone's been like they're kind of in shock, I guess. Yeah. Because most people don't expect it to be. I don't know. Like we're a band that had breakdowns everywhere and had this, that, and the other. We yep. still have those key elements. Yeah. But we have a lot more. Brought a lot more to the table, and I guess the sound I guess has come out more on this album which is probably the best 
like outcome because you can hear the melody, you can hear the heaviness, you can hear the fa like the fast parts clear, yeah. and yeah, we added blast beats and just better rock parts and more epic like rock parts and just more simple kind of parts as far as singing goes and yeah. all my vocals and stuff. We kind of I guess dumbed it down a little bit yeah. to make it sound like a more professional record which yeah. is hard to think but when I guess when people hear it they'll understand kind of yeah. what I mean by it so yeah. So what would you do from a lyrically I mean I mean bands like you guys Parkway Drive and even when back when you were writing for Prom Queen um, lyrically you've always been pretty prolific in that sense what was it emotionally uh, on this album is it, a, is it more personal or is it sort um, of something you want to reach out with people with? Over the last few years I just kind of focus on um, I guess life in general, like you, you get one chance at everything, and you, you we're kind of like like fortunate enough, like we live in the best country in the whole world. Yeah. So then we, uh, the fact that how good Australia is and stuff, we come home to Australia after tour and after playing like shows in Europe and stuff, and those last days take forever to get home because you want to see your friends and your family. And it's the same for someone working a nine to five job, so it kind of works. And even for kids who go to shows, they go to school and on Friday, they it's two, two in the other and they want to get home and that last hour takes forever. And it's like that with a job and it's like that with tour. So it kind of like, I guess, touches a bunch of bases. I sing about having asthma, I sing about having ADD really bad. And yeah, I guess I just tried to do it a bit personal. Uh, a bit about my life, but then other kids can relate to it, you know, yeah. so yeah, I guess it's one of those things where I kind of put it out there and everyone can kind of take something from each song because everyone has to deal with that in some some way or another, you know. Yeah, so keeping it personal, will be keep, people can relate to it and really, you know, interpret it their own way. Well, that's exactly it, like everyone, everyone likes, like loves being around their family and their friends and yeah. I don't really know too many people that hate living in Australia, you know, and yeah. don't like, like, love saying this is home, so I guess everyone can kind of sit back and kind of read the lyrics and hopefully yep. take something away from it. Cool, cool, no, that's awesome. So, um, your album's just about to drop, you got fuckload the touring, I imagine, coming up. Um, a new puppy, uh, baby on the way, just moved to the Gold Coast, billion things happening in your life. Um, what, what else is going down? Anything else that, uh, to shit throw out there to the fans um, um, before we wrap it up? I guess just the tour, getting ready for that. Um, I obviously, oh, I manage the artist murder as well. Yep, so I was going to mention that. I take so much of my time up as well, just trying to get their shit sorted for next year with a new album on the way that they're writing now. So yeah, we're just kind of, I guess us and I have got such a bond as far as yep. our two bands. We kind of want to look, look, do do a lot more stuff together, whether it be in Australia like this next tour is, or um, the next year try and go to Europe together or something. You know, like doing shit with your mates is the best thing. Yep. So I guess yeah, we'll try and do some stuff together again next year, and hopefully we can get overseas together and cool, cool. Yeah, have fun. And last but not least, um, I mean, I know this is probably on the thoughts and forefront of every single kid that'll watch this clip, but um, what can you recommend and what, what you know, words can you throw out there to kids that are out there in bands at the moment? I mean, you know, you're managing the IR, you've been in some of the most, you know, prolific bands throughout the country over the years in the hardcore, post-hardcore scene. Um, what are your wise words of advice from, uh, from the horse of the mouth itself uh, for kids out there starting bands now and thinking you know what can I do to, to make a you know some progression I guess you just got to sit back and have fun like you got there's no point doing a band if you think I'm gonna be in the biggest band or I'm gonna do this you can have those goals and yeah but you I think making small steps and then getting to that and like achieving that and then making more ones so you want to play a show and then you want to play out of your town and you want to play interstate and stuff like that and adding and adding because that's what we all did when we started band so I guess but at the end of the day you just got to have fun you got to yeah. be loving what you're doing and I still love what I do and yeah. everyone in my band loves what they do because fuck it's the point you know yeah. and like I guess with a kid just go play to your friends get all your friends in your band and just be so stoked on what you're doing because yeah. at the end of the day you walk off stage with a smile and that's what it's worth yeah, so, yeah. doing it for the right reasons not yeah, just exactly uh, not not just trying to fucking build some huge ego and try and be the next fucking Ollie Sykes or Winston McCall or yeah. what like Michael or, Crafter Mick Jagger <laughs> or fucking Ozzy Osbourne you know like yeah, yeah like because it's not going to happen for everyone but shit 
you can have fun playing local shows or you can have fun playing in your garage like it doesn't matter so yeah. I had had just as much fun playing shows in my friends houses back in the day yeah. as I did playing like fucking on a parkway tour or a prom queen tour or whatever you know like any of the fucking big tours that we've done so yeah, yeah. cool cool Fuck yeah, well, some, uh, some wise words from Michael Crafter from Confessions. These guys have got some awesome stuff coming up. Um, if you haven't heard Confessions, you're living under a rock. Um, they've got some amazing stuff, so check out their last album. Um, and, uh, and yeah, check out their new stuff when it gets released. Check them out on tour. Um, they'll be heading to a town near you soon. I'm Thrill Stuff. Uh, I'm not Thrill Seeker. This is Thrill Seeker. I'm Rick James. This is Michael Crafter. Yeah. I'm Michael Crafter, and you're watching Thrill Seeker. No mercy!